Hey guys, what's up? Uh, today we're going to do another pork shoulder. Uh, this is a really big one, uh, about seven and a half pounds that I got from Olympic Meats, uh, my favorite butcher shop. Anyway, um, what I did this time and what I plan on doing is cooking it within 24 hours instead of the usual 48. So when I'm doing that, what I'm going to do is actually cook it at 160 degrees Fahrenheit to do the 24 hour cook. Uh, that will help to dissolve all the connective tissue and make it super tender uh, and uh, very, very good for making uh, pulled pork. Uh, now, you know, I typically don't marinate my meats, but um, this time I decided to do um, a nice uh, pork style marinade. Uh, what I did was I uh, basically cut as much fat off of this as I possibly could without completely destroying the roast. Uh, I spent about 10 minutes just getting rid of everything, breaking it down as much as I could. Um, and, and also doing that, you know, I can actually make this pretty flat. I don't think it's any more than about three, three inches thick or so, which is good when you're cooking a big piece of meat. Uh, at a higher temperature, the thickness doesn't matter as much, uh, but you know, it's uh, still good to not have too thick of a piece of uh, pork uh, when you're cooking sous vide, uh, just because of the, uh, the incubation time of bacteria within the, the product if it's there. Uh, can actually grow if you have too thick of a piece of meat and you dump it into a bath that is not at you know the temperature it should be. So very important to preheat your bath. And uh, anyway, on to the good stuff. Uh, basically, I just took poured a little bit of um, red wine vinegar in my hand and just kind of slapped it all over the thing. Uh, then uh, after that, I put a rub on which consisted of uh, black pepper, uh, cumin, cayenne pepper, paprika, and a bit of dark brown sugar. So you see this nice, beautiful, uh, nice, beautiful uh, seasoning here on this nice piece of meat. And uh, anyway, uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, go ahead and cook it. So I'm going to drop this into the bath. Um, it's already preheated to 160 degrees. I got a two gallon bag here. As you can see, it's, uh, it's quite massive. Uh, but anyway, hopefully this fits in my uh, my tub okay. I'm a bit skeptical, but uh, we'll see here in a second. So anyway, just gonna take this, plop it in. Hopefully, fitting it in just right without uh, going too much over the maximum line. So actually, I have to take some water out here. So bear with me for just one moment. I'm gonna grab a cup. Okay, yeah, I had to take about three cups of water out. I filled it up to the 10, 10 liter line. Uh, that was <clears throat> apparently a little too full as this is a big piece of meat. You don't want to have your water go over the max line, which you can see on your Nova. So anyway, I got it in there. I'm uh, also going to, since it's a very hot temperature, there's a lot of evaporation involved. So what I'm going to do is actually uh, cover this up in some aluminum foil during the cook to uh, reduce the amount of condensation that uh, we have. So. Anyway, uh, we're in, we're cooking, and uh, I will come back in about 24 hours, and uh, I'm actually going to finish this one off on the grill. So anyway, uh, stay tuned, and I will uh, show you the rest of this delicious pulled pork, 24-hour version. So thanks. All right, so I figured I would just show you what it looks like with the foil on. Uh, like I said, this will cover up most of the gaping moisture. There's a tiny little portion in the back, but... You know, other than that, a lot of the evaporation will stay within the unit, so you don't have to refill it with water as much. I also threw a heavy bowl on top of it to keep it at the very bottom in case there is any evaporation. We do not want the water level to get below the level of the meat. So anyway, I'll be back in 24 hours. Okay, we're all finished. 24 hours is up. The foil worked like a charm. I barely lost any water at all maybe half a quart or something, but very, very little water loss. So very hot water, so be careful. Whew. Okay, so we're gonna take this out now. Wow, look at that size loss. All right, so we're gonna put this on the counter and uh, take it out. Wow, look at that. Take it out with some tongs and uh, basically we're going to uh, throw this on the grill here wet 
Uh, I preheated the grill to 500 plus degrees, how did I could get it? It's going to be difficult to get out, so bear with me. Looks like it. Uh, huh. Looks like it's so tender. <laughs> it's pretty much just ripping in half right now. So this might be a little more difficult to grill than I had anticipated. It smells amazing. So anyway, give me a second, and let me throw this on the grill. Okay. So on second thought, grilling was not a great idea as this is so fall apart tender that basically it was uh, kind of sticking to the grill and I was unable to get a lot of it off. So. I'm going to use the old tried and true blow torching method to get a little bit of crust on the outside. So, that being said, go ahead and fire this up uh, in one second. Alright, so here we go. Good old torch. Just give it a quick little a little burning. Don't want to get too crazy with it. There's a lot of uh, sugar in the uh, marinade, so it'll actually brown up really quickly. So you don't want to get it too hot. You just want to add a little crispiness to it. So that's what I'm going to do here. And uh, then I'm just going to shred it up and uh, show you, uh, you know, what I got going on in terms of the sandwich. So. That being said, stay tuned and I'll, uh, I'll show you the rest. In fact, I might even do a time lapse of the shredding itself, so stay tuned. Alright, so we are now finished. Next step, we're going to let it rest for a minute or two or five or whatever, and uh, then we're going to shred it. And make some really good sandwiches out of it. And we're finished. It was actually so tender, uh, it was one of the easiest pork shoulders ever shredded in the history of pork shredding. Uh, anyway, uh, next we're going to uh, throw it on a nice toasted pretzel bun since those are my favorite. And uh, I'll show you that in one sec. Okay, here we go. Uh, we're going to make a nice, big, juicy, this stuff is very juicy. And uh, I, I tried a little bit, and the spice mix on there was incredible. Nice and spicy. Put a lot of cayenne pepper in the rub. Uh, that really did the trick. So, here we go. Got our pork. Gonna put a bit of sauce on here now. The old East Carolina style sauce. And I actually made some red slaw for it. Leave a comment if you want the recipe for it. But um, yeah, this stuff is the best on pulled pork. I mean, I've eaten a lot of this stuff and I absolutely 100% prefer it. So, so, get a little bit of this pretty looking cabbage on here. The spoon might be better, but anyway. go. There is our sandwich. And uh, there we have it. The best way I have manufactured a pulled pork sandwich yet. 160 degrees for 24 hours uh, with a nice spice rub on it, marinated in vinegar uh, and all the spices for one day and uh, basically cooked up 160 degrees for 24 hours. I am really going to enjoy eating this and uh, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, just leave a comment. Thanks.